All right, back with you. I am Darren Smith. This is San Diego Sports Leader, the Mighty 1090. We broadcast live from Valley View Casino and Hotel up until 3 o'clock this afternoon. Yesterday it was Keel Quinn, AQ on the program. Today it's Winston Shepard, junior forward, getting set for St. John's University Friday night, a game that you could hear on the Mighty 1090. Up next, the winner likely will get Duke, but let's focus on Friday night's game with Winston Shepard, who joins us right now. Winston, this is Darren Smith. Thank you very much for a few minutes. Thanks for having me. How, how are you doing? Give us a sense of what it's like here. A little a little calm before the storm. You've been through 30-plus <laughs> games. Now you're preparing for the NCAA tournament. Absolutely. Uh, continue my preparation like I always do. I got up early this morning and uh, went to the gym and uh, have a little downtime before practice, get something to eat, and uh, get ready to go continue to prepare. I always hear athletes say the the best approach is to treat it like any other game. How do you do that when, frankly, Winston, it's not any other game? Uh, well, I try my best to just stay in my routine, uh, not to do anything too much different. Like I said, uh, I get up early in the mornings and go to the gym, so I did that, and uh, just keep my mind right. The NCAA tournament for you, three years, three trips to it. How enjoyable is it? We see the games. How about just the atmosphere, being around other teams, being in different cities? How much fun is the NCAA tournament across the board for you? Oh, man, it's it's incredible. You know, uh, it's what college basketball is about. You know, we, we, we always break our season up in three parts. So now we're approaching the third part, and uh, this is the most important part of the year. You know, so... Uh, like I said, I'm, I'm looking forward to being in my best last year in the tournament. Uh, I, I, I don't think me personally, I was at my best. Although I was able to play on the team, we had made a great run all the way to the Sweet 16. Um, but this year, you know, it's a different team. Um, but we're going to be focused. Like I said, we're always prepared. And uh, we're just looking forward to getting out there. Is it fun, though? I, I mean, you know, sometimes I wonder, especially in professional sports, because you always hear guys talk about it being a business trip. Is right. it fun in the tournament? Uh, well, first and foremost, it is a business trip. You know, it's not like we're going to Charlotte to go sightseeing. You know? <laughs> so, <laughs> it is a business trip. But to me, in my opinion, it, it is fun. You know, um, I mean, I look forward to being able to fly on a charter plane and get out to see a new city, um, get to play in a new gym, um, get to play on the national stage. I mean, at this time of the year, I mean, everybody around the country is tuned in to college sports. So I just look at it as a blessing, and I thank God just to be a part of this. So it definitely is fun. We're talking to Winston Shepard of the Aztecs, something I was not aware of. And, Winston, I, I follow both of these programs. I follow San Diego State, and I do follow St. John's. I did not know that there was background, that there was history between yourself and D'Angelo Harrison. I was kicking myself for not knowing that. Tell everybody, how far back do you go with St. John's senior guard D'Angelo Harrison? Oh, uh, man, it's uh, probably like a group of maybe 10 or 15 of us from back home, man. And we are best friends, you know, uh, we brothers. You know, me and D'Angelo grew up together, played together, worked out together. Um, I remember my mom used to have to work late nights, so... His grandma would come pick me up and bring me to practice, and she would drive us to tournaments. And, you know, it's one of my best friends, man. We talk all the time. He, uh, as so, soon as he found out that they was playing us, he was blowing my phone up, texting me about he was going, what he was going to do versus, man. So it's one of my good friends. What are the odds of that? I mean, think about being a kid, and I'm guessing this is this is someplace in Missouri City, Texas. Does that sound yeah, right? Yeah, okay. yep, yep, yep. So, I mean, what what are the odds? I mean, of you guys playing together when you're how old, and then all of a sudden here you are all these years later, and you're playing in North Carolina representing two different cities on two different coasts? Uh, man, it's, it's crazy. I mean, you know, for us to be – come from where we come from, beat the odds that we've beaten, and he end up out in New York and I end up out in California. It's uh, pretty much storybook stuff, man, you know, but um, like I said, we're just blessed to be in this position and have this opportunity to, you know, be doing something that we both love to do, and uh, I'll definitely be looking to get one up on him, and uh, I'm looking forward to it. Give us set the scene. I mean, if you could take us back, where are you guys playing? Are you guys playing in gyms? Are you guys playing yeah, in rec, rec leagues or what? Gyms, AAU. Um, we both 
he went to uh, a rival middle school of mine, and uh, that's pretty much how we became friends and got to know each other. Um, he's a year older than me, and uh, about eighth, ninth grade, we ended up playing on the same AAU team <laughs> back back home in Houston. And like I said, his grandma would have to pick me up. My mom worked so much. Uh, see that his grandmother would come pick me up and take me to the gym to practice and work out and bring me back, eat with each other. I would spend the night, spend weekends <laughs> over there with them. So like I said, man, we developed a relationship. You know, we're really like brothers, man. And, uh, you know, obviously he's one of the better guards in the country, mm -hmm. you know. And uh, so I'm looking forward to playing against him. Yeah, he's had an interesting career as well. I wonder what it's going to be like for the other guys who played with you guys when you were all younger. I wonder, it's going to, I wonder what it's going to be like for them when they see you guys out there on national television on Friday night. Oh, uh, man, well, I'm sure everybody back home will be watching, you know. <laughs> and uh, like I said, it's a blessing to be in this position. But, you know, all of that's still secondary. You know, at the end of the day, it's San Diego State versus St. John's. You know, I mean, obviously, you know, we have a lot of history together, but I'm going to just have to go out there and do what I can to help San Diego State get a victory. You know, it's, it's not so much about Winston versus D'Angelo, you know, but it is a storyline in there. No doubt. It is a good subplot. Winston Shepard joining us on the Mighty 1090. So you've had a chance by now, I would think, Winston, to at least have seen the tape or at least have heard your coaches talk about what tape they've seen. What are your impressions of this team that you're facing Friday? Uh, well, they're kind of small. Um, it's kind of crazy. They've, they've had a couple three or four players be suspended in the past few days um but they can score the ball and they've liked to play up tempo um they were a great team out in the big east we definitely we, yesterday we got a chance to watch some film of them and see what they do and how they like to attack so we've already started the game plan do they remind you of anybody that you've played uh i don't think we played a team like them specifically with the personnel they have but the way they shoot threes and will shoot up shots from anywhere, any time in the clock, it, they're kind of a mix between the UNLV and Colorado State. You know, mm -hmm. we talked about if we don't have a hover hand or we don't close these guys out appropriately, that it, the game could get off to a start like we got off at Colorado State when those guys just blitzed us from three. So you have to be there on defense, got to be there on catch. I mean – from D'Angelo to Jordan to Phil Green. I mean, these guys shoot the ball, whether it's 25 seconds on the clock or two seconds. I mean, these guys get them up. Right. Yeah, I was telling it earlier at Winston, and I'm sure you've seen it. I've watched this team play a lot. They'll be on a three-on-one break, and they'll pull up from three. They'll, they'll bomb away from anywhere on the court sometimes. It's great when it goes in, but it's maddening when it doesn't. Well... I can say that's how D'Angelo has always played since the first. Right. <laughs> that's so, I mean, for him to be in that system, it's a perfect fit for him, you know. And uh, like you said, when those shots are going in, man, it's, 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 it's tough to stop those guys. But, uh, of course, you know, we pride ourselves on being the best defensive team in the country. So I'm sure that the contrasting styles will be an interesting game to see. How come you don't cut lines in your eyebrows like D'Angelo does? I used to. I used to. <laughs> I used to. I used to. But, you know, uh, I'm kind of past that now. And uh, <laughs> so I don't cut mines anymore. But I, but I used to, man, back in the day. Okay, good. Good to know. Is your style of basketball, you talked about the different styles here. I mean, do you have fun in your style of basketball? It's fun to win, obviously. But is it fun to, to play that kind of suffocating defense and keep games Low, low possessions, the style that the Aztecs have been successful with? Well, like I, I, I've, I've always been a, a guy that says, you know, that's what recruiting is for. Mm -hmm. You know, a guy like D'Angelo, when he's being recruited, St. John's would appeal to him. A school like San Diego State appealed to me because of the style that I play. You know, I'm a great – I like to think of myself as a great defensive player. Coach Fisher gives us freedom on offense, on the break to play. He gives guys freedom in pick and roll. So I definitely thought that style would fit me, which I think it has. And so definitely, I mean, I love playing for San Diego State. I mean, there's not a lot of teams that coaches that give their guys freedom the way Coach Fisher gives us. So I love it.
Hey, last thing for you, Winston, and, and you know, it's not every day that we get an opportunity to speak with you here on this show, at least. But I, I do wonder, you know, now that you're through, you know, for the most part, you're you're through three seasons here at San Diego State. Is this about where you thought your career would be? Third trip NCAA tournament, uh, leading the team and scoring the way you have. Is this about where you thought you'd be when you came in the San Diego State? Uh, absolutely. You know, when I when I chose San Diego State, I came from a program at Finley Prep where we did nothing but win, you know. So that was my first and foremost thing that I looked at. Okay, I want to play for a program where I have a chance to win and win on a national level. Obviously, last year we were got up to be a top five team in the country. We got a chance to go to the Sweet 16. So absolutely, I mean, and I've always looked at myself as having the talent to be a key factor on whatever team I played on. So, I mean, this at this point in my San Diego State career, I'm happy and pleased where I'm at. Obviously, I have goals and would always strive to continue to get better. But uh, when I take a step back and just realize how blessed I am to be here and doing what I'm doing, and I'm definitely proud of myself. Yeah, I asked that because I remember being at the Final Four of the year, Kentucky beat Louisville. It was in New Orleans, so you were, I think, coming in as a freshman. And I remember just being around some of the college basketball media, and I'll never forget one of them saying, yeah, Winston Shepard, man, that guy, he's, he's going to be a one-and-done player at San Diego State. And I never really, I, I never forgot that. And I wonder right. if that's the way you you viewed yourself at that time. Oh, uh, well, man, like I said, I, I have a, a 100% faith in God, you know. Obviously, I would strive to play. I strive to play in the NBA, and I know that it will happen. And whenever it happens is when it's going to happen, you know. So I, didn't, I don't want to rush it. And uh, I felt I had to continue to get better, which is why I didn't leave after my first season. So, you know, am I disappointed about not being a one and done? No, I'm not. I mean, you know, there's no rush to these things. You know, there's <laughs> guys that jumped out and went to the NBA after one year. And, I mean, these guys that have no degree and they're not playing in the NBA at this point. So that wasn't clearly the best decision. You know, it works out for some and it doesn't for others. So, you know, whenever I make that ch- chance and choice to jump to the NBA, I want to be able to go there and stick, you know, so – I think I've, what I've done is best for me. Well, good for you, Winston. Thank you very much for doing this. I enjoyed the conversation. Best of luck this Friday night. Thank you.